Hey, Star Children, is it just us, or does Dara Nessi seem to enjoy toying with her fans' emotions? As we move towards November, she keeps teasing us with the promos and building up the hype while giving us that word we all hate. Hi! But seriously, the recent promo in which we got to see beautiful Star Rito was released, and now we got to see this beautiful masterpiece. <laughs> was their invitation of each of you when we got that notification that there was another promo. Now let's get into some analysis. The promo starts with Star talking about how she caused a lot of trouble, which can mean a lot of things that either happened or will happen. She also mentioned that it happened this summer, and it can mean that she's blaming herself for everything that's happened. Star could be going through a lot of self-doubt and maybe even self-hatred, blaming herself for what has happened. After she says this, we get to hear Marco talk, but he's talking about events that have already happened. First, he says that Star should go find Ludo. Then he mentions the Whispering Spell. And then there's Toffee. And after that, we see Marco running across the screen while Star's shouting for him. Then a picture of Goodbye, spelled with a clip of an eye. What could all this mean? Could it be Star reflecting on how much Marco has been there for her and how much she influenced her choices from the very beginning and how they are connected since then? The story up till now has been connected to the very beginning. From Ludo to Toffee to Toffee possess Ludo. Now they face a new beginning and a new threat. But now Marco is going away and Star is saying goodbye. She's now alone and her partner in crime is leaving her. She tears up not wanting to let go. Her feelings and emotions are getting out of control and now she's trying to push them away. Just as she cries and a tear hits the ground, she says how she needs to be a better princess. In the next frame, Star says how she can't do what she wants just because she's a princess. Doesn't sound like her, does it? It's like she's trying to push how she really feels away and make herself and others believe that that's who she's become. But after that, we hear Eclipsa saying how she has self-control issues, and Star is there saying she does too. This frame was also the thumbnail. Could it mean Star is slowly going to Eclipsa's side because she feels they understand each other? Another reason that this could be the case is the fact that right after this, we hear Moon saying, If you want to find out the truth for yourself, it will be too late. Who could she be saying this to? Well, my guess is, yes, our one and only star butterfly. As right after that, we hear her saying, I need answers. This could be them talking about Eclipsa and what happened during the Great War. Star asking about the deal they made and what Eclipsa did to be considered so evil. Moon could be saying her side of the story, but maybe not the whole truth. She could be trying to protect Star from everything. But being the curious girl she is, Star goes out of her way to reveal the truth no matter what, despite her mother's advice. After that, we hear Eclipsa speaking, talking about how everything is different, but the most important thing has stayed the same apparently. That's when we hear Moon saying how evil the Dark Queen is, and we see her hands covered in purple veins and her holding her corrupted wand. I feel like this shows that Star is torn between two stories, two truths, and none of them fitting with each other. And now she has to go on a search to find answers she desperately wants to know. Or does she? But we'll get to that later. After this scene, we get to hear Tom speaking to Star, and we might finally get an answer as to what happened between them. Tom's telling her encouraging words and how she's the best princess with inspiring written all over his silhouette. The reason she fell for him before could be the fact that she mistook something that was just admiration and loneliness for love. Or she could be now falling for him all over again, with her being heartbroken over Marco and him comforting her. But right after that, we get to see a voice screaming, You're too messed up on this boy! My assumption is that was Ponyhead talking to Star about her emotions, and then her saying what she said at the Blue Moon Ball. I need a friend. But who is she referring it to this time? Tom? Maybe Star is telling Tom, after another one of his attempts to date Star, that she doesn't need a relationship right now. Or is she now finally sorting out her emotions towards Marco? Right after we hear him say, you're my best friend. Or is Star getting flashbacks and her emotions are getting control over her again? Then we hear Star's voice, and she sounds very concerned. Something's wrong. And as those words appear over the screen, we see Glossark's eyes all across the screen. Did something happen to him? As the last time we saw him in the previous promo, he was alive but tied like a balloon across Star's arm. Did something happen to him in the temple where they resurrected him? She mentions the spell book and the leftover pages they found at the monster temple. What were they even doing there? Were they fighting to retrieve those pages or something else? I assume because of the next frame, they went to see someone, possibly a monster called Villainous, who could be a monster living in that temple and one of the characters we'll get to meet. Maybe Star was led there on her journey for the truth, as this monster could be someone from the old days of the war. Whoever this was, or is, I believe they might have something to do with the plot, as in giving Star further instructions. 
Right in the next scene, we get to hear our princess outraged. She screams, this is your last chance, but who is she talking to? I honestly think that she's either talking to Eclipsa, maybe another character will get to meet, or someone we already know is getting a whole new role, looking at Jenna or her mother. This could be the scene where Star got to the end of things and found the person holding everything back from her, and now she's threatening to even fight them, no matter who they are as long as she gets the truth out. Then we hear Jana's voice, who I think may be getting a whole new purpose this season. She says, Don't ask questions you don't want answers to. What did she mean by that? How deep do the secrets and lies really go for them to be so terrifying? What is calling Star? Is Eclipse are controlling her and, like Moon said, making her do things she doesn't want to? Will Star be able to get to the bottom of it all? She probably will. And why? Because unlike from the beginning of the promo, she's now her rebel self. I can do what I want. And Star wants the truth. Will she be able to handle it? Or is she going to be the new Dark Queen? Perhaps the forces of evil Star now has to face are her own evil thoughts. Either way, it seems in the end she will find herself and with it her way out. At least that's what it could be. Maybe it won't only be her. Perhaps this time she will be needing a hero. Maybe the beginning was the very end and her goodbye was her leaving and Marco was running to the end to save her. There are now new theories because of this promo. Perhaps Star is letting go of Marco until she is a better princess. She could feel she's failing and managing to hurt others important to her because of her not being responsible. This is more likely due to Moon's response, because she puts everyone in danger with her carelessness. The cape is meant to be a gift for Marco so he can remember Star and Muni until they meet again, as we see him running away and Star calling out for him. It could mean he's now gone and they wanted to have something to always connect to each other. Maybe we will not be seeing a monster in the temple, or anyone as such but the one only eclipsed that. It could be where she went to regain her strength. Star will later on begin worrying again because all the pressure will be placed on her. She will feel the desire to see Marco again because she can't continue without the support of her friend, but it could lead to her losing control of her emotions. We can now theorize a bit as to how Mina could play a role in this, considering the fact she snooped around the monster temple. We saw her have a fair share of screen time inside the intro, so she could now come back to Mini to help out in fighting for her homeland. Then again, maybe this was even half of how it's going to play out. This promo managed to give us so much and yet so little in such a short span of time. It's completely blown us away. This was just one of the many theories. Please go on and let us hear yours. Remember to keep the hype, smile, and get your couch and popcorn ready. Star vs. the Force of Evil is merely a month away. Bye bye everyone. Stay star-tastic.